Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Bearded Gentleman. On today's video, we're going to be going through part two on organizing your small kitchen to save space and make your life just a little bit easier. If you missed part one, check it out. It's right up over my shoulder here. Sonic's pointing up there. He wants you to check it out. Uh, it was a pretty good video. It showed you some neat, cool stuff that you can get at Walmart, Dollar Tree. You don't have to spend a lot of money, and it'll make your life a lot easier in the kitchen. So here we go, part two. Uh, we're going to be working on the cabinets up above the stove and also my baking cabinet that I have over my other shoulder here. So come on in, and let's take a look at some more tips on kitchen living in a small apartment. All right, so we've moved up on the step stool because I'm not a basketball player. And here we go into this cabinet right here. I showed you guys at the very beginning, I showed you guys these little uh, containers. You can get these, these are under $2 at Walmart. They're great, they are airtight. Keep your rice in these. If you have pinto beans, if you do a lot with pinto beans, put, up, put those in here as well. I've got diff two different types of flour. I have bread flour because I do have a bread machine that I do use from time to time. I've got some all-purpose flour back behind it. This right here solves a big problem with brown sugar. The problem with brown sugar, even if you've got it in a Ziploc bag and you think you've got all the air out of it, it just dries up and it gets hard. So... This is an airtight container. It's got a labeled brown sugar right on top. Your brown sugar should stay good a lot better in this container. And I've got some regular sugar back behind there as well. So I've also got these breadcrumbs here. I use breadcrumbs quite a bit when I make my homemade mac and cheese, which I'll show you guys that at some point. I do the top with some breadcrumbs. I also, whenever I make hamburgers, unless I'm just doing straight ground beef hamburgers, if I'm mixing anything else into them, I use some breadcrumbs to help hold them together. I've got a couple of turkey bags. I've got my yeast for when I use the bread machine. I've got a couple of extra measuring cups here. And then these measuring cups, I absolutely love these. I cannot recommend these enough. Uh, I've got the one cup and two cup versions. If you take a look on the inside there, you can see that they actually have lines going up inside. So as you fill it up, you don't have to stick your head down and try and figure out, okay, how much do I have? You can do it, you can just fill it up right from the top and look right into it and see exactly how much you got. I absolutely love these. These might be the best thing I've bought for my kitchen so far. I cannot recommend them enough. These are OXO brand. I found them in Bed Bath & Beyond. They are getting very popular, so you can find them just about everywhere now. So that's the first cabinet here. Let me take you up top just above the stove here and show you what I got going on there. All right, so we've moved up above the stove here. This is where you want to have things that you kind of want out of your way, but you kind of want to get to pretty frequently. So this is a great place for that. Also, the height of this cabinet really makes it good for a few things in particular. So here I've got all my cooking liquids that I use pretty regularly. Vegetable oil, cooking spray, uh, I've got my red wine vinegar, Worcestershire, all the different liquids that you use pretty regularly have those right up here in a very easy to reach place. Now this is actually the spice rack that I showed you at the beginning of the first video. This is actually also be a really great place for that Lazy Susan that I showed you how to make as well, the $3 Lazy Susan. That would be a great thing to put here as well. Over on the other side, as they fall over, this is where I have my cookbooks. I've also got my bottle of wine back there that I use for cooking, and also my wax paper and aluminum foil. So that's a good place to have it. You can just reach right on up there, grab what you want out of there, grab a recipe or something, set it down, and then when you're done, put it right back here. Or if you just find yourself in the kitchen just not knowing what on earth to make, you got your cookbooks really, really handy. So you can flip to a page and go, you know what, that's for dinner tonight. So that's a really good place to put these as well. So that's the top of the cabinet above the stove. I got one drawer I'm going to show you guys real quick, and that will be it for part two. All right, so we've moved down to that small drawer that's just to the left of the stove. It's not a really wide drawer. What I find that this is most useful for is this. There you go. So... Have you ever tried to figure out where the heck to put all your Ziploc bags? You want to have them in a place that's really easy to get to. 
but you don't want them in the way at all. Hey, fill this drawer up. I've got gallon size storage and freezer bags, sandwich bags, freezer quart bags. I've also got my pair of scissors here, a few thumbtacks in case I need them, and my permanent markers. So these fit in this drawer absolutely perfect. This is a great place. Literally, I'm standing right at my stove. If I need them, they're right here. So this is a great place to put these. All right, guys, so here's my on the top of the counter arrangement that I have. Uh, this is really good because it's kind of along the wall here. It's kind of out of the way, but it's really easy to get to when I do need it. So this is my spice rack. I believe this is actually a spice rack that's intended to hang on the wall. I've got it simply resting against the wall. I love this because it's really shallow. It's only, I'd say, maybe about two or three inches deep. It's very, very shallow uh, along the wall here. So it doesn't take up a lot of counter space. i got my salt and pepper here because I use those literally on just about everything. And then I've got all my other spices. You can save some space here by turning some of these sideways. They fit in here great. Put those all there. I've kind of got them separated based on what they are, kind of what they go with. So, for example, here on the bottom, I've got my cayenne pepper, my crushed pepper, my chipotle chili pepper, Cajun seasoning, chili powder, red curry paste. Kind of all like my spicy stuff. I keep that all together there. Over here... This is a great, cheap thing to do. This is actually a flower vase that I got from the store. Just a big glass jug, essentially. Uh, you can probably pick these up for pretty cheap. And put your most commonly used utensils here. So I've got a couple of my wooden spoons that I use all the time in here. I've got a slotted spoon, a solid spoon, pasta spoon, my silicone whisk, my spatula, Keep the essential stuff that you use all the time, keep it right here. And it's right here on the counter. You don't even have to dig through the drawer to get to all this. Cheese grater here on the counter. And then up top, this is a really, really cool thing to do. Up top, I've got the command hooks with the, with the sticky adhesive in the back. Here I've got my measuring spoons. One, tea, one tablespoon all the way down to a quarter teaspoon. They hang up absolutely perfect right there. Just kind of go behind. There they are. Then these are my measuring cups. I love these because they're collapsible. They fit down a very, very shallow profile. So one cup, that's how it is normally. Once it's clean, it smushes down really, really flat. So these are awesome because you've got quarter, third, half, and a full cup, and they take up very, very little space. You hang them on the hook right here. They're very easy to get to. I've got a couple of oven mitts here. Use these. And then uh, these are uh, basically I put my hot plates. Uh, or if I pull something out of the oven and need to set it on the counter, I've got those. They're all hanging here on these hooks. Take a look at those. All I have to spend a couple bucks to get these hooks. You hang these things up right here, and you're good to go. So this is a lot of stuff in a really small space. All right, very good. So that's going to conclude part two of this three-part series. In that third video, which will be coming up here pretty soon, I will guide you through how to organize your pantry and make things really easy to get to in there. We're going to use those little white baskets that I showed you at the beginning of the first video, and we're going to make our pantry really easy to find everything. So I hope you guys have been enjoying these videos so far. If you have, make sure you hit that like button down there. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I know we're just getting started here, but we got a lot of great things in store for you here. So thank you guys very much for watching here on The Bearded Gentleman.